Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm doing well. Today is going to be a little bit of an adventure, and I don't know how much we'll get to see. I'm going to make every effort to show you guys as much as I can. Last night, we were driving around. My girlfriend points out. She goes, Jordan, what is that over there? I said, oh my gosh, I don't know. We have to go look from the street. We could see something going on in the back of this yard, and when we got to the front, I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I started looking it up, and the story to this house is just absolutely incredible. But as of now, I don't really know what's going on. So we're gonna go out, take a look at it, I'll tell you about it. And when I did my research, do you wanna know how I found out most of the information? The person that owned this house was in season nine, episode one, of Hoarders. He was also the Lieutenant Governor of Nevada. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. Well, as you can tell, not everybody usually has a tribute to the Explorers of Nevada, the crews of the Columbian Challenger in their front yard, or their former front yard, with their name on it. Dr. Lonnie Hammergren. All right, my friends, behind me stands the former home, or maybe, maybe he still gets to live here in some fashion, but this was the home of Dr. Lonnie Hammergren. Let me tell you a little bit about Lonnie. As you can tell, this is not only a unique home inspired by Mayan architecture, but it's a big, big, big home because it is not only this house, it's also the house next to it and the house next to it because Lonnie bought all three places. You see his neighbor at one point was going into a retirement home. So Lonnie decided to buy his property and then the neighbor next to him also decided to sell the property and so Lonnie bought that. Now Lonnie was, from what I understand, he was the first neurosurgeon in Nevada. He was a NASA neurosurgeon. He was in the military, a surgeon in the military, and he just made gobs and gobs of money to where he says on the memorabilia that he had in this house, some of it still exists, a lot of it still exists, but now it's owned by someone else. I mean, at least that's what it looks like online. He called this Paradise Castle. And if you look through the gates of Paradise Castle, you can see things like a dinosaur, an elephant, a big red hot pepper in there. So Lonnie apparently just made so much money that he decided to start collecting and building his dream. And this was his way of capturing his history. Everything that was here was something he loved and like I said, he ended up on an episode of Hoarders where they, they basically realized that Lonnie had said he never cared what things cost. He made so much money it didn't matter. And he, they estimate that he had spent up to $10 million on his properties. Now you can see right here, there's a little kid on stilts, a statue of that. And then as we move along over here, you'll see Venus de Milo. But Lonnie collected everything. When he was a kid, it started with butterflies. And as he made money in this property, he actually decorated all this outside with that Mayan theme that we'll see. Now his wife, Sandy, Sandy was given this corner house. So Sandy could do whatever she wanted in this corner house, but Lonnie got basically the backyard and everything else. So Lonnie, just kept buying and buying and buying to where he, even though he had made so much money in his life, he was $750,000 in debt and just couldn't bring himself to let go of things. In fact, when you watch The Hoarders, there's a point where his wife is asked, you know, what would you like Lonnie to get rid of? And she points to a bunch of knight statues, like Knights of King Arthur's Court type statues all over the house. And she says, how about those? And he says, I'm not ready to get rid of those yet. And then she points to a horse with a knight on it. She says, how about that? And he says, no, that's me. I'm on that horse. 
because he had been knighted several times. He had several degrees. Very smart man. He apparently one of the things that he liked to do was open his doors here to anybody that wanted to tour it and he liked to tell them about how good he was at everything throughout his whole life. Everything that he did, he was successful at it. And he wanted this to be his legacy. He had an iron lung inside that had a paper mache of his face. And he said that when he died, he wanted to be buried inside that iron lung. You can see right here, it looks like a Tom Selleck Magnum car coming right out of here. He had several Rolls Royce inside. He had a Apollo space shuttle that they used for testing in California. Though that became a problem because see, when the people from Hoarders came here and tried to help him with auctioning some of his belongings so that he could hopefully keep his home, he didn't want to let go of anything. And when they brought the bearded guy, Mark, that you always see on Pawn Stars, then they brought him, the guy from Clark County um, Museum Administration, he looked up at that space shuttle and he said, do you have any documentation for this? He said, Lonnie said, you don't need documentation for this. You can tell what it is by looking at it. And Mark said, no, I mean, <laughs> does it have any NASA stickers? Does it have any federal anything? You know, anything to give it provenance? And he said, Lonnie just said, you're wasting my time. Nobody, nobody would make a model of this. He just believed that if it existed, that, that that's what it was. That, you know, if somebody told him that that's what it was, that's what it was. Here you can see this was his driving car, this Batmobile that he used to drive around. But inside here, he would have automobile parts and he would have um, just about everything you could think of. He'd have signs from former casinos that were once in Las Vegas. He would have celebrity memorabilia. He had Liberace's staircase, Liberace's uh, outfits, his boots, several things of Liberace's, his piano. Quite amazing. Now, unfortunately, Lonnie apparently just could not let go of things. And, um, and on Hoarders, they show him having an auction where out of everything he had, the guys that were there to help him said, we've never seen a hoarder this bad in our life. N nobody with quite as much stuff. Lonnie was only willing to put 24 things up for auction. When they had the auction, uh, he only made about $4,000 and then said he was happy with that because he was gonna take that money to tell his story, um, release an autobiography. But here, you can see, as I mentioned, how he ended up changing the outside. Now behind here, we'll go on to the other side, the street behind here. You can still see, I mean, there's a canoe up there with people in it up on the roof, but you can still see a lot of the things that he has on the other side still there. Now I keep kind of saying that I don't really know what the status is because I see that the house was sold online. I see that they now have signs up that I'll show you that says this is a private residence and that they're calling it a different manner here but they also tell you you can follow the progress of the renovation online so it seems like they're in some way open to people knowing about what's going on here they're not changing it but look over here you can see some of Lonnie's memorabilia still here that big stained glass piece over here Now, since he was a neurosurgeon, he also said they also said that he had countless skulls inside the house, like human skulls. And um, he actually said himself on Hoarders, some of them were from the people he operated on. And he even had some of their brains in jars inside of his house. Pretty much collected everything. You can see there's a little miniature car over here. He had countless signs from casinos. I mean, he had knickknacks of all kinds and like i said he was the lieutenant governor he actually ran for lieutenant governor in one of nevada in the 90s look at all those mannequins on the roof interesting guy right they basically surmised on hoarders that he had he had come to feel that you know the belongings and him were one and that without him telling the story, it was, you know, he is a part of this house. This was a part of his story. So once Lonnie took over the second house, I believe, he started putting trains on the property and some of the 
owners, apparently Lonnie still lives in one of the houses or part of the house, but the new owners to the other house that was sold, that's why I was so confused, they're gonna let us see a little bit. How cool. Railroad tracks that go all the way around the middle house. No which is kidding. Really cool. He used to have a miniature train and bring the kids around. That is so cool. That See, I love what he was doing personally. Yeah, I, I get know. how it got out of control, but yeah. the idea behind <laughs> saving, you know, just kind of little odds and ends like this, I yeah. just think that's so cool. And he was a genius, or is a genius, he I mean. Is. Oh my gosh, the stories he tells are just amazing. I don't understand how he did so much. Oh my that. gosh, is. I'm, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Do you guys see this? I did a whole vlog on Red Fox and I mentioned that his Model T was sold at the IRS and I said, I wonder whatever freaking happened to that. It's right here. Holy cow. That is so neat. I love it. Wow, I'm a huge, huge Red Fox fan. And look at this on the side. He's painted Hammergren Salvage. It says Hammergren Sanford and Son Salvage on the side. I love his sense of humor. That is so cool. This one is mine. The big one is mine. The neighborhood is gorgeous. Which neighborhood is Take a look at all this stuff, man. That is so interesting that he collected so much oddities. Now he's not allowed to give tours. So how I'm doing this, like I said, is the neighbor that bought one of the properties bought the big house his first house that's the one he he had basically put another mortgage on it and um and he couldn't pay that mortgage so he he lost the first house but they were telling me their plan is um even though lonnie still lives here and everything when he is ready to move on uh, they want to buy the property look at all this stuff he even has somewhere a um an 1800s um, gondola from Venice. Look at all this. Railroad station. He's got the brontosaurus bones from bringing up baby, Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn. Look at all this. I can't believe we're getting to see it. <laughs> I guess I should have known somehow, some way, something would work out. And there's the train, look at that. Isn't that cool? And she said that Lonnie put his name on just about everything because he's kind of vain. He likes himself. <laughs> so she said there's mirrors all over the place. He even has Liberace's staircase. She said they had to um, refurbish and everything because it was, they just couldn't, they, some of the pieces were missing and everything. Here's John Wayne. And um, yeah, you saw the showboat sign back there. They actually have the paddle wheel from showboat. And here's the front of that Beverly Hillbillies car that they ended up never using. Cool to see. I just love this stuff. Lonesome Lonnie. Nevada Balladeer. Nevada Balladeer. People get mad if I pronounce it wrong. Look at all that stuff. Oh, a sign from the El Rancho. The Hammergren home. Of Nevada history. There's an NBC movie camera. Do you guys see that? Or like a TV camera. This is so cool. What is that, a staccato drum you said? Wow. The bass drum is right there. See, and there's the bottom of the staccato drum. Look at that little train right there. This stuff is so great. Yeah, he has a replica of the atomic bomb. Look at that, there's an airplane coming out of the freaking side of the house. <laughs> wow. Look at all this stuff. I actually have pictures of me at the theme park in front of that guy. Are you from here? Yep, I'm from oh. Vegas. Oh, cool. I used to drive by all the time with my mom. It was actually my dream house. So you I said this was your dream house. Yeah. I used to drive by the back with my mom all the time. It was like our fun little treat to see what the crazy guy added to the backyard. 
I would have never in my life imagined that I would have ever lived in it. And the funny part is, I never knew they opened it to the public. So I have never been in it. You could have been, yeah. Yeah, I could have. And Sandy, Wani's wife, she hates that I was never in it before. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, the first time I was in it was, was with our realtor. How long have you lived here? Three years. Now, three years in, you yeah. still have to be uncovering little things here and there oh all over gosh. the- Oh my gosh. We find things in walls that I cannot even explain. We found 48 birdhouses in a wall. No in kidding. A wall, along with blueprints to a casino that never got built. So yay wow. for me, because the blueprints are really cool, but the birdhouses were just crazy. Wow. <laughs> What's your favorite thing on, on his property or your property? Is there anything that just you were so happy to have or the the dome, the dunes dome. That, that is the really cool. Glass, it's yeah. gorgeous. I wish it was over a different part of the house because we can't enjoy it where it is right yeah. now. Um, but yeah, that dome, because Lonnie fought for it and he really wanted it and he didn't even have space for it. He actually built that whole side of the house just for the dome when he got it because he wasn't expecting to get I it. Had he no was idea. fighting with Steve Wynn to get it. Now, did people yeah. just randomly call him if they had something they wanted to get rid of, or did he have to hit up auctions? I know he, you know, he spent he a lot, so. He hit up auctions, he did salvage yards. When casinos would close, he knew people to get in and go get things. Um, but there were, I can't even tell you how many stories they've told me about people just dropping stuff off in the front yard. The elephant that Sandy has from Phantom of the Paradise, or Phantom of the Opera, from the um, Planet Hollywood. That was just dropped off in the front. They have no idea who dropped it off. <laughs> so we just dropped off an elephant. That's it's great. Like 10 feet tall. That's yeah, awesome. It's just there. Yep. Wow. And so that was the, the you know, when you and I met, I said, you know, I was just trying to figure out what the deal is with Lonnie, because you, because I see that you guys are saying he gets to, he's staying in his house still. Yep. You bought the big house yep. and he still gets to keep some of his collections. So yeah, he's still they, happy. They have a lot of stuff still. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this whole entire property is just collection. So they did clear out, I'd say 90% of the stuff out of the house I own, but since moving in, I have started also collecting. So it's not going to ever be as full as Lonnie had it, but I do love collecting as much as he did. What happened to bringing up baby bones? Do you know where those are? The brontosaurus um, bones? They're at the McManus auction house. Are they Right down the street. Are they gonna be auctioned or are they keeping them nope. he's, on as, display? As far as I know, he's keeping them. I know he has a price tag on them, but I don't know that he'll ever really sell Maybe them. I'll swing by there and see if we yep. can't add those it's to right here. On, right on Pecos. Great. Yeah, they're really neat to see. I can't believe it was in my house because seeing it in his big auction house is one thing, but imagining it in my house, it's like, how was that ever in here? Is that something he was allowing them to auction? Is that how it went um, or? The man who owns McManus, Patrick McManus, he bought them when the auction happened. Here. Okay, that's very, oh God, I, I would have loved to have attended that auction. I saw that. Oh me too, but I would have stuff went known. for. I, I guess online it says stuff went for nickel on the dollar. It, to, just to for people that are collectors like us. It was sad. So sad to see the stuff that... I look at it as the stuff I could have kept. The stuff that I could have saved. Yeah, it sold for pennies. But I have bought stuff back. That's so great. Yeah, I the submarine that's above my pool, I bought that back from somebody who bought it at the auction. And I went and found it and sought it after. And so it. cool. Yeah. You said that the torch lights up. Yeah. There's a light switch for it somewhere. I don't know where, but we found it one night and accidentally hit it. And then we were like, oh shit, it lights up. <laughs> so for a long time, I called it the carcophagus. <laughs> oh, so the sarcophagus, he wanted to be buried in that, in the iron lung, in a car. That's and awesome. Also, he wanted the tomb to be bricked up and he wanted to be exhumed in 125 years. Although I don't know the significance of that number. There's gotta be a way we can make that happen for him. <laughs> actually just met the guy who helped bring it here. You said it was a it, one flight and it crashed one and he got it. Crashed, yep. The wings aren't on it. The wings he put on part of the spaceship upstairs, but still it's got the wheels the seats in it and everything. Yeah. Here we have some organs. Like I said, brains. That looks like Hillary and Donald Trump with eyeballs all over here. It must have been an election piece. I love that in the front of this that it has their name. Look, Sandy and Lonnie right there. Yeah. And she said that they're underground tunnels she's going to let us walk through. Look at this. It's 
a Beatles front of the train. Look at that, Betty White video slots. Penn and Teller, that's great. Let's take a look. The train clearly used to go through here. Oh, look at that, that's moving. That pirate in there is waving at me. Or what is he? He's like a biker. And then, look, Hammergren for uh, elect, elect Lonnie. And then let's see what we have here. All kinds of skulls and mining gear and let's see. And then that is like a bust with what happened to the head there. Holy cow. Yeah, he had them dug out for who knows what reason, but they used them for Statue of Slave Girl. It says, removed from the front of Caesar's Palace during Jane Fonda's visit in the 60s to preclude accusations of sexual discrimination to be restored. Never had heard of that. Now that's a piece of history. Look at that. And then look at that. Cheryl Rogers, daughter of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Pretty cool. And uh, right now we're underneath a rocket, as you can see, or parts of a parts of a rocket, and that's part of a pawn shop. But look at that! Isn't that crazy? All right, now she said she'll meet us at the end because it's uh, only one way to go. You just go all the way around. So we're taking the underground tunnel that Lonnie had created. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. No kidding, seriously, they're tunnels. Oh wow, <laughs> look at all the bloody knives. I f this reminds me of when I was in Paris at the, uh, the catacombs. <laughs> Just like all the crazy skulls and everything. Oh wow, all the bloody tourniquets and everything that we're gonna walk through. You know, this is like how horror movies start. <laughs> hey, we're just here to take the tour. What is that? Oh, I think we found the end. Wow. Isn't that Robert Wadlow? World's tallest man? And then look up there. The chandelier. That's great. There's so much cool old stuff in here. I love this. Look at that. That is a sign from the Sands. That famous Sands Rat Pack picture that I just vlogged in the uh, Madame Tussauds. Look at that. That's so cool that that's a throwback. Look at that. It's, a, it's all the way around as a UNLV basketball game. Oh, take a look at this. It says Bugsy Siegel's restroom. Look at that. Is that not the Ronald Reagan from the Phil Collins Land of Confusion video? He actually has a full bar here for when he would throw parties. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> Look at the big chandelier with the skulls hanging from it. That is killer. The world's most beautiful women pass through this door because it's their bathroom. This is the average girl at the Wonder Bar. Take a look at this. Look at all the trains and everything, and then he's got a train going all the way around. But do you see this? Howard Hughes Tool Shop? What the heck? That's great. And then check this out. Politicians scrape the bleep from boots before entering. Oh, look, we just made it around, and look at the other side of the Red Fox 
Model T. Isn't that great? Dude, I would kill just to have that cover. Isn't that great? That is so awesome. Now this is cool because you see it says Showboat Hotel Paddle Wheel. The paddle wheel, if I'm not mistaken, was what Debbie Reynolds bought and turned into the Debbie Reynolds Casino. This is the paddle wheel. This and is it. we're looking at it right through it this. It goes a story down and two stories up. It's wow. Cute. And here is the other side of his Apollo. And there's his proof. The Apollo Soyuz Test Project. And he did work for NASA, so it's very possible they gave it to him. Now we're back in the front of the house, and she's going to show us a little bit more in her backyard. There's more of that Mayan decor that he put up there. I love people that do things like that. That's so great. If you uh, watch his Awake Wake on YouTube, there's videos of his funeral, I guess. Um, this is where he wanted to be buried. We use it for storage, but all the paintings tell the story of his life. Back here on the back, back wall, that's Lonnie doing brain surgery with his wife assisting. Wow. This guy is deep, man. He would be buried in this room in that sarcophagus we saw outside. Yeah. And this tells the story of his life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. God bless him. So this is where the Liberace staircase is. They had to recover and kind of change it a little bit because they just they said they couldn't find somebody to redo the carpet the same way. But these this part of it was the original stairwell. And then look, I love what they're doing here. And take a look at this. That thing is huge. And then look at this woman right here with the gigantic pants. That's probably about 20 feet tall. Now this I saw on their Facebook page. That is Debbie Reynolds' dress. That orange dress is Debbie's. And an egg chair. I'm gonna get one of those for my place. I love those. Wow, look at this place. The pyramid. Wow, look at this. Wow, <laughs> this is great. Now when he lived here in this house, you would have never even been able to see the walls because there was so much stuff. I think that's an original um, flamingo. This is her cat. It is a werewolf cat. Look at that. Hi! Take a look at this out by their pool. She, their submarine that she repurchased was from Sea Hunt. And on the other side of it, look what it says. You can see it says Lloyd Bridges. So you were saying that you had, they had to widen all these and re-strengthen all of the... Uh, all of the steps and everything to make sure that they were safe. And look here, this is Liberace before the uh, the carpeting was changed and everything. You can see the same exact handrails and the crystal pieces and everything. And the background on that photo is actually wallpaper from his show too. That's I took great. the wallpaper because it was all damaged except for this tiny section. So I saved it. That's and great. And he actually had that for coat. No kidding. Yep, she used to wear it around the house at dinner parties. And there's that. Look at that. In addition to the house in 1974, he actually got a friend of his drunk to sign off on the paperwork for this because it should have never been built. But you know, that was. And this was going to be his planetarium. And the rules. Yeah. Um, the wow. We don't have the projector he had because he had a real planetarium projector that was from UNLV. So we just have a little crappy one. But we use it as movie theater. We have a projector and a screen that comes down. Yeah, so that's great. Look at the design of this. You can actually walk all the way around. We were down here, just came yeah. up from it's down gorgeous. there. And take a look at this. I just think this is so yeah. cool. Very unique house. And they donated them all to Restore. This was the only one left when we got there, which is funny because we have the dome from the dunes. So it's kind of crazy that we, this was the only one left was the dunes. Look at Hugh Hefner and then this dragon up here. Holy cow. I'm gonna go up and check out the upstairs room now. Up it's okay, gonna this was Airbnb gonna be the night. observatory. She said he used to have a big telescope up here and the roof and everything was open and it used to rotate. Wow, so they're gonna turn 
this room <laughs> they're working on now into an Airbnb. Pretty cool. Definitely a unique home to say the least. And there's, <laughs> that's what we were looking at from the ground floor down there with the globe inside. And their ceiling, very cool. And look at the windows, aren't those great? And then back in here you'll see on the glass it says <laughs> Cathedral of Knowledge. Wonder what that was. I just looked oh, at look at him. And I love that guy. Bathroom of mirrors. <laughs> that is so yeah. weird. So, girls don't mind this bathroom at all, but guys hate having a few drinks and having to pee in this bathroom because they get dizzy in it. So, yeah, I would too. Yeah. <laughs> secret doors, secret staircases. She says she's hidden stuff all over the house, so she said to pull back the shower curtain here. See what we find. Full size Santa. <laughs> and if you're in this area, she said come by on Halloween and Christmas because they're going all out for the decorations. Then do you see this? It says the Desert Inn Hotel architectural model. That is so cool. Look at that. He somehow got the architectural model for when they were building the Desert Inn. And we know that that was the hotel that Howard Hughes ended up buying because they were trying to kick him out of it and he didn't want to go. So he just bought the place. That is so cool to see. That is so cool. <laughs> and take a look at that. That is that whole arch. That's all glass. And look at the etching on here. I love that kind of stuff. And look at all that. Look, that's a cool chandelier light. I go to all the stores. I know all the guys who run the auctions, so I get actually gifted this to us because my husband did some work on his car so they gave it to us oh and they, <laughs> yeah there are little people down there that's so crazy they actually put people you can see walking on the sidewalk yeah. in front of the fountains and stuff and amber said that um they would have had this at another hotel kind of announcing that this was going to be coming so there's the desert inn sign right there because i the remember I, I remember being a kid at mgm they had the excalibur one of these there you can see the Submarine and then the voyage to the bottom of the sea one right there it Says Richard Basehart and David yeah. Hedison on it. It's pretty cool Upstairs and downstairs. This was the Cathedral of Knowledge. Oh my gosh Wow Holy cow This is amazing and take a look at that right here on the wall That is incredible and that, uh, that rock paneling, my grandpa's entire basement. <laughs> I remember that from growing up. Wow. Oh, wow. I didn't even see that. Holy cow. <laughs> Jeez. There is something going on everywhere here. Lonnie is the man, I'm telling you. And look at the glass. You can see some of the stuff that's, uh, that's out there. And look at the roller coaster. He actually got one of the roller coasters, I believe, from the stratosphere and put it on top of his house. Look at those yellow windows up there and everything. I love that. This is so cool to be in his cathedral. This kind of stuff, when you just come into someone's home and see these kinds of things, you're just like, wow, that's amazing. And that's from the Sheridan, apparently. I know that Sheridan symbol. Um, the dome came out of the dunes before it imploded, and then the chandelier that hangs was Bugsy Seagulls. Wow. It's weird chandelier. I mean, it's it, it kind of looks like branches in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of. That's very interesting. It may be missing pieces, too. Who knows if that's what it looked like at that time. That's very interesting. Because Lonnie yeah. liked taking pieces off of things to make new things. It was painted by a Russian cosmonaut, and this was his imagery of them going up into space. So these were his fellow cosmonauts going up into space and the faces that they were making. And and that was a gift to Lonnie, you said? Yeah, that was a gift from Lonnie, from Lonnie and Sandy to us because Sandy couldn't stand it. She hated the faces. <laughs> <laughs> so that Gorgeous. came from an we're apothecary. We're actually selling the pieces downstairs, but these were yeah, keeping. Lonnie and Sandy's wedding, they had a string quartet lining the entire walkway for their reception. 
and it's, oh. it was gorgeous seeing the pictures, so I can't even imagine how gorgeous it must have been in person. And of course, the stage downstairs, there were singers, performers. That's so great. Just to think, having a string section going around here, that is a wonderful idea. What's with Willie Nelson on your wall? My mom went into labor in 1981, showing my age. My mom went into labor. Me she, too. Went, she went to my grandma's house to have my grandma come with her to the hospital. And Willie Nelson and his roadies band was all at my grandma's house partying, doing a lot of things that aren't legal. <laughs> and um, they all thought it was a great idea to come with my mom to the hospital. They all waited around. Willie was amazing. He waited until my mom gave birth. 12 hours she was in labor with me and he waited the entire time. What? To wait to meet me when I was born. He gave me this. You can see it's actually my birthday on there. He gave me necklaces, little baby leather jackets and t-shirts and all kinds of fun What a great guy. Yeah. But to wait all that time to just meet a baby. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it was really neat. You'll see the other ones like it. And uh, this was one that Lonnie got. From Caesar's Palace? It That's so great. It's not going to be fun when we have to move it. Look at this. Voyage to the bottom of the sea. Sea Hunt, the TV show. What about this one? Yeah, that was from Sea Hunt. These go on that. I just haven't figured out how to put them back on. The yellow ones from Sea Hunt. The tank that you saw behind when you would check into the rooms, they had mermaids swim in it. From so MGM. We actually just did the opening monologue, I guess, in the original Mermaids book she wrote about Las Vegas. Wow! Yeah. That is so cool to have that back here. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be moved from the property, so I was like, well... I guess I'll get some tortoises. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it, it busted a couple years before we owned it and flooded all of Sand Hill, flooded all of No Sandhill, way. Everything. I've seen the photos of the flood. <laughs> <and it's not laughs> wow, and that is thick glass. Look how thick that yeah. is. Wow. It's on both sides. It's cemented in. It was craned in, so we can't ever remove it. You know, moving equipment and stuff all the time. Yeah. We wanted it for a so look in the pool, you see Planets Jupiter the and, and the Challenger astronauts yep. are in the, the pool. <laughs> wow. Ooh. And then you can see Venus, Mars, the sun. So Lonnie was a stickler for things being very, very accurate. So the um, measurement of the planets are exactly where they should be in correlation to the size of the pool. So he actually did all the measurements and calculated it. Saturn. So they are exactly where they should be. And look above really? the faces, you can even yeah. see the date of when it happened. Of the dam, but there's Hoover things dam. to add back. So Lonnie had it built. The rocks around it, these big, huge, huge rocks, are actually from Hoover Dam. And he had, he had <laughs> guys who worked at Hoover Dam come and help him build this dam. That is so cool. Yeah, so eventually we're going to redo it, make it a little water feature, make it a little waterfall. So... So you see, it's not even attached to the house. Yeah. What's... It was a travel shed, basically. A travel trailer, I guess? Yeah. I don't know. Um, so I'll tell you the story. We were in here demolishing this room, and I was in charge of demolishing the closet because my husband gave me a tiny job to do something small. I demolished this room myself thinking it was just a closet. It had a gorgeous vanity, some chandeliers on the walls. I kept the chandeliers, but everything else I sledgehammered. Okay. Big time, sledgehammered everything. Okay. We were out walking our dog and we ran into Sandy. This is when we first moved in the house, so we didn't know them as well. She's like, oh, what are you guys working on? We're like, oh, master bedroom. She's like, you didn't touch the closet, did you? Yeah, Sandy, I just destroyed it with a sledgehammer. She's like, that was Labrachi's travel dressing room. Behind you, yes, that's I what that is. I destroyed with a sledgehammer. So, needless to say, that night I was out digging through the garbage trying to save everything I could. Gluing mirror pieces back together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the Riviera, his costumes were too heavy to go up and downstairs to his dressing room all the time. So they put this out in the parking garage for him to have an easier access to change. Oh. So this was his little travel dressing room. Wow, Yeah. what a story. That would have been yeah. amazing if you had kept it. I cried. So, you're, you're, so you different. said that the gondola, the 1800s gondola I was talking about earlier, yep. he, they actually went to the Venetian yep. now. Venetian Palazzo own it. 
um, and there's video of them. If you watch, there's a little video screen of them taking it out of my house. Oh, and, cool. And I didn't know that. It. I was wondering this, what happened to that. This was the pit. It's all filled in now, but it was a pit. Oh, yeah, right yeah. there. I can totally see that. Yeah. See, that's what I always think. So, um, Lonnie had the two Beatles cars. One was a replica he had made, and one was the original. He sold the original to a guy, actually didn't sell, he traded the original to a guy for this hospital. It was in Kansas City. There was all kinds of legalities, asbestos. He could not take ownership of the hospital for whatever reasons. So, he traded the car. <laughs> And all he had left was this sign. He went to Kansas City and took this sign off the hospital. And here's what he has to show for the Beatles rainbow car originally. And it sold at auction recently for $5 million. Could have saved his... Wow. Yeah. So I told Lonnie he could have the sign back, but thankfully he doesn't want it. because I, I don't blame him. <laughs> I love that story, so... So there we go. Wow. I can't believe we got to see as much as we did today, but that was so cool of them to let us see it. And I assured them I will come back around Christmas and Halloween, and I will check it out and see their decorations. Fun time. So to continue on with this vlog, I decided to come out to the Venetian and see that 1800s Venetian gondola that they told us about. And there it is. How cool is that? That was in Lonnie Hammergren's house for all those years. And when she got the house, she donated it here. It's so cool to see. We kept it alive all those years. It's great, right here on the information it says that this indicates that this would have been a wedding gondola, which allowed more decoration than most. And then here's a picture of the gondola at Lonnie's house. In that section they have now filled in that she showed us. How cool is that? So what's interesting about this, I noticed this is part of the old Harris collection. William Hara meticulously collected some of the most amazing automobiles of all time and he went out of his way to get lawyers to ironclad a contract that said that those cars could not be separated after his death and the lawyers that he trusted put a loophole in there and the hotel was able to sell a big portion now up in reno there is a automobile museum the national automobile museum that is what's left of the harris collection that people stepped in and stopped them. And it says that this was originally sold from the Harris Collection, and that's how Lonnie got it. It was auctioned by um, the collection, by the Harris Hotel, or whoever bought it at the time, and it says that won by former Lieutenant Governor and neurosurgeon Lonnie Hammergren. Oh, we gotta check this out. This looks great. Oh, wow, they're naked women. Nice. Now we're right out by the Mirage at the Siegfried and Roy monument. Wonder what will happen if I put my hand in his mouth like in the uh, the mouth of truth. <laughs> <laughs> 